Today, Matthew and I are going to build a footboard for my bed. And it's not going to be anything fancy. These are just pine two by fours. I think, um, Matthew, go grab a tape measure. I think these are 10 footers. I don't know. But the price of lumber, believe it or not, is finally back to normal. These were only like $3.38 a piece at Home Depot. Uh, you know, seeing one this size, this is 104 and 5 eighths of an inch, so a little over almost 8 foot 9 inches for some odd reason. But either way, that's fine. We're just going to build a simple, basic footboard no, that anybody can build if you have just a few simple tools. So I already got my measurements, I'm just trying to figure out my lengths for my cuts, and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we got the two cross supports cut. The legs are cut. So now we got to do a little bit of fancy cut. Not much, though. But what we're going to do, let's see if I can set this up here. Seems like every time I ever start filming, these kids disappear on me. But uh, let me grab my pencil here. These board, well, here's kind of what we're building. And I know this is a very, very generic picture at the moment, but it's going to have slits and you know some boards like this obviously they're going to be spaced out correctly whatever but to do that we're going to use a two by four and we're going to rip it down uh, probably quarter inch thick strips that'll sit in these vertically so what we're going to do now is we're going to find center on this two by four that's pretty damn close to center right there but uh we're going to find the exact center we're going to use a table saw and we're going to cut about a quarter inch deep by quarter inch wide gap full length of both of these pieces here and that's where it'll hold our cross supports or not our cross supports but our vertical pieces in not really supports there's gonna be for looks but so that's what i'm gonna do now i'm going to uh get this lined out get the table saw set up and we're gonna start cutting them all right guys so i found the center as you can see bring the camera in here so you can see them right here is what we're taking out this whole area it's gonna be a quarter inch wide a quarter inch deep so to set that up on my table saw I'm sure there's many ways you can do this, but I've already got this square set up right here to where my first line is going to be. So what I do, and I'm sure there's many ways you do this. Bring the camera over here. Emma's acting scared today. She don't want to get around nothing, I guess. What I do is just set the edge up and I move my fence over until we butt up on it. And it's good like that. And then obviously you can check it. But, um... Yeah, that's what I do. So now we got that set, we're gonna set our blade at a quarter inch high, which is gonna be about right here. And then I'm just gonna crank it down. This quarter inch don't have to be exact, but it does matter when you uh, go to put your pieces in. Yeah, right there is a little low. That looks good. Honestly, you're not gonna fine tune in. You're gonna get one of these saws close, but it's a cheap like two hundred dollar, two hundred dollar Dewalt table saw. It's it's not a grizzly or a fancy saw stops or by the legs, but that's pretty much it. So what we're gonna do is run. Since I have only just a regular saw blade in that, I can't put a dado stack on that saw. So we're gonna run the first cut all the way down this board run a second board and then we're going to adjust our blade to make a second cut in both of them. So let me, uh, we're going to get the camera ready and we're going to start cutting. All right guys, bring the camera in here. Emma. So as you can see right here, if I bring this board on in, we're going to be right inside that first line just like we want. So that's what we're going for. Now what I'm going to do is have Emma turn the camera off and then uh, we'll fast forward to all this cutting stuff because it's going to be boring for you anyways. Alright 
So we made our first cut, it went good. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna adjust our fence to make the second cut. Ooh, that's pretty close right there. Now, you might not, I went too far. With these smaller saws, uh, that's pretty good right there. When I cut this, it's probably gonna leave a slither right in the center. You can either knock that out with the chisel, or you can just set your saw up after you run these both and put the blade right down the center and knock them out. We'll see which one, we'll see how flimsy they are. Sometimes they're really, really thin. You can just take a chisel and kind of run it at an angle in there and it'll knock them right out. But um, yeah, we'll see. So we're gonna start cutting these again. So as you can see now, we got our quarter inch deep plus quarter inch wide groove cut into the boards. Bring the camera up in here so you can see this. We got this little lip in here I was telling y'all about. It's not much. So what I'm gonna do is probably just knock it out with the chisel or like I said, you could, um, actually we'll do both for you guys. So this side, they cleaned it out pretty well all the way through. Um, I think on this one, since it's still pretty flimsy, but either way, like I said, you can clean them out with the chisel, just like this. Or, you can set your saw blade up, and get it lined up just right, and run it right down the center, and knock the rest of it out. Now this one here, it's a little bit wider than the other one. And that's, that's probably something I did, I don't know, you know, but. Um, for this one, I guess what we'll do, just for entertainment purposes, we'll set the blade up, to hit just the centerpiece now and do one more pass on the table saw. Alright guys, got my grooves cut, cleaned out. So now what we're going to do, these are my legs and I guess I got to pull some measurements off my drawings here to figure out how much gap I have between the two. But, um, yeah, so next what we're going to do is take another 2x4 and we're going to set up our saw to cut quarter inch wide slits so that will sit down in here to be our, our vertical pieces going up and down. But, let me tell you all something really cool that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this push stick. Pretty cool, right? They put our logo on it. This one was just a, a prototype. I've got three of them that's made for me, but, um, you can tell this one's already getting chewed up. They're just three quarter inch MDF, which is good because push stick, you want them to get tore up. If these are tore up, it means you still got all 10 of your fingers, you know? Still good. But anyhow, if you want to get a custom made push stick, like this one right here, uh, the page is called Vicky Gregson from my home to you. They're located in Greenville, Ohio. I will put a link to them. Where are we going to put it at? Let's put it right here in this part of the video. Don't point the camera up there, silly. We're going to put it right here in this part of the video. And uh, you contact them, they will make you push sticks. Now this is one I actually designed for them. And, but you can get any design you want. I just, I like a big, hefty push stick, something that's got a good hold to it and whatnot. But um, they can do whatever you want, put your business logo on it. And uh, yeah, so contact them, order you up a bunch of push sticks, good to go. So next thing we're gonna do now, like I said, I'm going to, uh, probably not gonna film this, but sometimes it takes me a while to figure this shit out, but. Um, when we come back, you're going to see us start cutting our quarter inch strips. Alright guys, now what we're going to do is, I got my boards cut to length, they're going to be 10 and 7 eighths of an inch, because remember we got quarter inch going into the top, quarter inch going into the bottom. So like I said, it's going to be a very low profile footboard. Um, the whole reason for the footboard is I'm sick and tired of my comforter falling off the end of my bed every night when we sleep. So just something to keep the blanket up against the bed realistically. So what we're going to do now is we're going to raise this bad boy up so we can cut all the way through this. Right there, that's a little too much. We'll go about right there. Now I'm going to set my fence up at a quarter of an inch. Right there. Now when you're doing these cuts, one thing you could do is you could take off your riving knife right here because it's but I, I'm not going to take it off, but you could. But this is where your push stick comes in handy. And your push stick is, it's going to get cut up just like this, which is fine. Like I said, these things are kind of just throwaway. All they're for 
keep your fingers up out of the way of the plate. So I'm gonna have Miss Emma here get the camera set up, start filming. We're gonna cut, probably just go ahead and cut both of these all the way up, see how many pieces we got of it, and we'll be back. All right, got 13 of them cut. I didn't really know how many I wanted to do, so I just cut as many as I could off those pieces. But basically now, we're gonna figure out, you know, these are gonna sit in here, like so. And obviously they're gonna be closer than that together, but, um, we're gonna figure out how many we want to put in it and I'm gonna be back to show you all a really cool trick. How to figure out your gaps on this just right. Okay, all right. So, now we gotta figure out our spacing between these. This is a cool little trick I learned. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is, I got 13 strips that are gonna be built into this thing and I want 13 gaps in between them. So what you do is push all your pieces together and butt them up at the end where they want to go. Pull a measurement from the end down to where they line up at. This is 50 and 3 eighths of an inch left over. So then you get on your little fancy fraction calculator because that's what I got to use. I'm not that good at fractions. So I'm going to take 50 and 3 eighths divide that by 13. It gives me 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. So I went ahead and cut me two blocks here at 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. And these are going to be our spacers top and bottom. So how that'll work is basically and this isn't, you know, we're not assembling right now. I'm just kind of showing you all. So it'll be just like this. And this should, if this is right, line us up all the way down to the end. And if you don't like the outcome of it, you could always, uh, you know, cut some more strips to put in it if you wanted to or whatever you need to do. But let's see if it works. I think it will. So this is just kind of rough. You can see their movement as I'm sliding the pieces down and whatnot, but that's okay. It's just for demonstration purposes. When we get ready to glue this thing up, we'll do it all perfect. I don't know, it's getting close, Emma. <laughs> so as you can see there, oops, it's all right. we got a gap here and no gap down there. So I think some of them might have moved a little bit though, but it works, trust me. We'll show you when we get ready to do this assembly. All right guys, as you see now, I got them laid out how I want them on this one. My spacers worked, um, but what I did something a little bit different. I wanted, since I got 13 of them, I went uneven so I would have one in the center, but I found dead center of this board, which is 35 inches, centered this board on it, and then I started my spacer blocks all the way down it, like that, all the way down on each side. So what that ended up with, by using that spacer block, on each end now, I have an inch and a half, and then over here, I also have an inch and a half. So now, I know they're all perfectly centered all the way across, so they're just in here temporarily again though, right now, because we gotta do one thing that I absolutely hate using. It's a great tool, but I can't stand using this tool. I think it's, I don't know, I think it's taking a lot out of woodworking, honestly. But keep the camera right there, Emma. I'll grab this uh, tool. Sorry about what we're gonna use. Ta-da! The pocket hole jig. I don't know if I'm gonna use this one. Probably not. I'll probably use this little clamp on one because I don't wanna stand these big boards up. But I might use this one because it's easier to set up. But either how, um, the pocket holes are great for cabinetry work, anywhere you're not gonna see them. Uh, you're not gonna see the screws on these. I would prefer to use biscuits and, you know, biscuit joint and glue it up. Or, if I had a lot of money, like some of these woodworkers on YouTube, I would use a domino, but dominoes are expensive and we're not talking to pizza. We're talking a domino cutter. If you know what a domino cutter is, that's awesome. If not, we'll put a picture of it up here and you can see what they are and the price of them. I believe Fest Tool is the only brand that makes them. They are way too, expensive for what I do. So anyhow, we're going to put probably two pocket holes in each end of the top and bottom cross boards. So that way we can screw them into our legs. Uh, once we get those in, we'll start assembly. And something else I think I'm going to do, and just some of the little details, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to cut a quarter inch strip that's long enough to cut down that will fit in between these in this little gap here. You see what I'm talking about, Emma? So you see how we got a deep 
quarter inch gap right here, we're gonna put a border fill in this and be flat across the top. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna get started on. We're gonna go ahead and do these pocket holes and, um, oh, let me show you something real quick on the pocket hole jig. I've had this pocket hole jig for probably five years now. My, uh, my dad up in Ohio gave it to me. I never ever knew this whole time I had this thing, and I don't believe he knew it either, because I seen him a video of it one day. Did you know the Craig pocket hole jig has a place where you put your bit, your, your driver bit, and your drill bit in the back of it? I never for five years of owning this thing knew that. I actually saw it on TikTok one day, and when I saw the video, I was like, there ain't no damn way I've been knowing that. And I came out in the garage and looked at mine, and I was like, oh lord, look at that. So, honestly, the driver bit's kind of way to in there, but yeah, and that's cool. See you in a little bit. We're going to drill some pocket holes. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick on this pocket hole jig how to set it up. Now, as you can see on here, they've got these measurements here. you got measurements over here and whatnot you can use and all this weird stuff. I don't do nothing like that. Here's what I do, all right? So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to set this height here for the thickness of your wood. Now, we know a 2 by 4 is an inch and a half thick. So, we're going to set it right there. That's really the only measurement you're going to use on this thing. I do not ever, ever, ever um, use this stupid little thing over here. This is where you're supposed to be able to set it. You know, I should be able to put it about right there, tighten it down and be good to go. But I don't do that. What I do is I drop it down in and we go to where it almost touches the bottom right there. Because that's going to be, that represents the bottom of our wood. And then I just tighten down my set screw on this little collar. And that's it. So, for fun purposes real quick, because I'm sure some of you are watching this and you're like, oh my god, that's so wrong, you can't do that. No one cares. This whole thing is, all you want is the pocket for So, for example here, and I'm going to have to adjust this because it looked like the last time we used it was something on three quarter inch wood. Like I said, these, these tools are good. I'm, I'm not knocking the pocket hole jig, it's just whenever these jigs came out and everybody started buying them, it seems to be that's all you freaking see in woodworking now is I pocket hold it, I pocket hold it, like Jesus Christ, learn some damn joinery. Now if this wasn't pine, some dovetails or something would have been nice on it or some, you know, anything else would have been nicer. But like I said, this, this is just pine. So let's drill a hole and see what we got. It's like I got a dead battery. <laughs> Get a new battery on this before we actually start drilling. But look at that. We got a perfect pocket here. And you can see this goes in to where the screw goes. And right there is where our screw head pops out. You could even go a little bit shallower on that collar if you didn't want this hole to pop out, but it's perfectly fine. You got a good uh, good pocket for screwing, it ain't gonna break out. So let me get a new battery on this thing. We're gonna set these up, drill supporter, eight pocket holes, and we'll be good to go. assembling this thing. What I do on this fancy little homemade table line is, I know there's many ways you could do this, but that's how I do it. I'm gonna clamp one side of it down. We'll take one of our side pieces here. Now this is, uh, it's kinda like you get one shot at it, to be honest with you. And I ain't gonna lie. Cause once you drill that pocket hole, if the board moves just a little bit on you, it's gonna be really hard to get another screw to go off of that, just a hair bit or however much you need it to go. Let me grab a bigger square here. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, if you don't have these Milwaukee aluminum squares, you gotta really try them. They are awesome. I like them a lot. So, as we can see here, that's gonna be square. So that's where we gotta be at. And what I'm gonna do is try to put another clamp here, I guess. This is uh, not really lining up the way I want. We're not gonna put glue in these joints here though because we're gonna have a top cap that goes on it plus all of our cross supports gonna be glued in too. So I don't wanna go crazy on the glue. 
Now another clamp you could use, like this here is another hold down clamp. It'll hold the two boards together for you right here. I'm not using that today. This clamp, kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, but it slides in your pocket. Well, I guess it's not good for two by material, two by fours. There we go. So now what this does will help hold it lined up, but you see how it it pulled it instantly, and that's gonna pull it out of square. So what I'm gonna do is try to get that out. We're just gonna keep the square in it. See right now we're not square. We need to be right there. And that's actually that's my fault. Because what you should do, and everybody does what working knows this, you should pre-cut your boards. This is the factory board right here, the factory end to it. And you know, normally you put it on your saw, take like a half inch, quarter inch off, just get a nice clean cut on it. I didn't do that. I uh, guess I got in a hurry. That's okay. So what we're gonna do is just, uh, we're gonna hold it right there like that, and we're gonna drive some screws in it. So we'll be back. All right guys, we're getting ready to cut our, uh, we got our quarter inch, our quarter inch strips cut out of a two by four. Yep, we're good like that. <laughs> I'm gonna show you now is I got a little stop box set up here because we're cutting, I'm gonna say we needed three and seven eighths of an inch between each of our risers. So this is our three and seven eighths. We've already got this set up with a little stop block. So what it's gonna do, we'll just be able to set this up here. This way we're not measuring and marking every one of them. So we can set it right in place. And slow cut. And remember, let the blade stop before you pull it up. Because if you pull it up while it's still turning, you're gonna take a little bit off of this. And if you take like, you know, even if it's a 32nd of an inch or a 16th of an inch, that's gonna add up quick by the time you get, you know, to the end of your project. So we're gonna go ahead and get these all cut up. We're not gonna bore you with filming that. Um, I don't even remember how I many I need, 11 or 12, 13 of them. So we got like 26 of them to cut and we'll be back to start assembling. All right, we got a handful of these spacers cut out now. So now what we're gonna do, we already got glue down in here. We found center. We, uh, we did have a little mistake earlier. That was my fault. I screwed up and uh, had the wrong spacer board or what I thought was my spacer board. And so we, we had to revamp a little bit here, but we're good to do it now. So this should, if we lined all this up correctly the first time, which I believe we did, we should be good to go. Now these are spacers. Kings of the Air playing with the damn cat. Spacers go on each side. Just like that. And then it should all fit together now. <laughs> but let's see. Got a little too much glue in there. That's alright. And the fun part is trying to put the next piece on the top. Or, well, this thing is upside down right now, so it'll be the next piece, but the uh, bottom part of it. Kinsley, quiet down with that cat. I'm gonna stop the video here so I can do some uh, child management because they're driving me nuts already. We'll be back. Oh Alright guys, we got the bottom piece put in. It's screwed together. And now, putting some glue in here so we can put our spacers in on this one and get it lined up. And this will be just like the top. We're gonna have an inch and a half on each end. And it should all fit together just like that. So, this little trick actually works pretty well. I don't know if it's actually a trick, but like I showed you earlier in the video on measuring these out, it works pretty well. You get a rag, wipe some glue off. But we're getting there now. All we gotta do after we get these put in. Uh, get all these spacers glued in here, and then um, we will start on our top cap for it. And then it's time for the the one part of woodworking I don't really care for. And that's sanding. I don't like. It. It's a mess. So, uh, 
yeah, I guess we'll go on down the line here and continue putting these in. I like it when they're a good fit like that. But, uh, we'll be back after we get these in. I ain't gonna bore you all with everything here. All right, guys, we are back. We got it assembled now, perfectly spaced. Got a little bit of glue wipe out yet still. But now what we're gonna do, I probably should have done this before we assembled the legs onto it, but oh well. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't want it to just look like two by fours all the way down. So I'm going to cut an angle on this thing a little bit on these legs. And now, yes, I could measure it out as an inch and a half. We already know that that's what a two by four is. But it kind of showed me other ways you can build this because this is a very simple build. I mean, literally, I've got with tax thirteen dollars in this wood. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just kind of transferring some lines that I can see, and then we're going to get circle saw out and we're going to cut a taper into these. I don't think I'm going to go up to here. Obviously, that look kind of dumb. <laughs> but we're going to figure out exactly where we want to lay it out at, and. Go from there with it. So what I was thinking was maybe take it up like four inches, maybe right here. So basically, you're gonna take this four-inch mark you just made. You don't gotta have a full line on it, and then square the wrong way. You got your pivot point on your square, so pivot it over, mark it. And we're gonna cut this portion off. Now that I look at it, I don't think I like that. I'm gonna go further than four. Let's try to go six. Go right there with it. And then again, put your pivot point right here. It even tells you that. I'm not making this up. It even says pivot. Right there's your pivot point, okay? So we're gonna go on our pivot point again. Our first line we drew. We're gonna pivot the square over. Right there. That's what we're going to remove, is all of this. I just gave it a nicer look on it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just make you a line, and you can go any height you want. This don't have to be the height I'm telling you to go, but um, it works every single time. So line that up, nice and slow, pull it over, there. Okay. Now you got multiple ways you cut this. You can use a jigsaw, a hand saw, a circular saw. I'm going to use a circular saw though. Man, that's a uh, cement. All right, guys, we're going to put the top board on it now, the top cap, whatever you want to call it. I already got it cut to length, but I got to rip it down on the table saw. I'm going to show you a, what some people like to call a pro tip. I got these scrap pieces in DF here with a screw in it. What I'm going to do is nothing special here. You're never going to see this. Yeah. I do all my Screw it on the ends of this. And what this is going to do just like that. So now we can work on this thing and we'll leave it like this until the stain on it dries I'll clear it so now we can just stand it up <laughs> it reminds yeah, me it's the same way if you was painting interior doors, you know, doors you just screw them all together at the top because you're never going to see the screw holes in it now this is going to be my top cap and it should have a half inch hanging over on each side but we got to cut it down a little bit we know a two by four is an inch and a half. And you're actually looking at the back side of it right now. This would be up against the deck because you see the pocket holes there. So we know a two by four is an inch and a half, like I said. I don't know how much overhang I want. Maybe make it two and a quarter. Just give it a little overhang so it's got a nice little lip to it. That'd probably be about it. And I might run a, um, I don't know if I'm gonna do a round over on it or a chamfer bit. A nice little 45 on it or something, but we'll figure it out. Anyhow, I'm gonna get the table saw set up. We will uh, rip this down to an inch and a half. 
and we're just about ready to start sanding this thing. I think. Let's see here. Now I'll tell you what, I don't know what's going on with the weather today, but I'll tell you, it's getting colder since we've been out here this morning. And when I say cold, I know you folks up north have got it really cold. Not as cold as us, but I'll tell you exactly what the temperature is in here in the shop right now. It is about 64 in here in the garage. So I'd say it's at least 60 outside or so, give or take. You know, the garage is going to get a little bit warmer. But, what do we say? Two and a quarter. Make that will work right there. So, uh... We'll film it for you, fast forward it. It's gonna be just a quick single cut, and then we'll be back. All right, I wanna show you this real quick before we go it. So this board's plenty wide enough. This is a two by six, or a one by six, but I got all these knots. I got a knot here, here, and here, all on this end. So I'm gonna put the knots on the outside of the blade. That way when I cut it, I'm gonna have a nice clean board with no knots in it. It's kind of a little idea you think of before you go running it through the saw. All right, guys, got our top cap cut. We're gonna put some uh, glue up here. Try to put just enough where we don't get no ruin out. Now I know I should have probably pocket screwed this to there, but I ain't doing it. I don't like pocket screws. What we're gonna do now, this is the side I just cut on, so I'm gonna put it facing the outside just because it's prettier. Now remember I said our, our footboard itself is 77 inches long. I made the top cap 78 inches long, so we should have one half inch overhang on each side. Then what we're gonna do is put some clamps on it, hold it in place, so we can uh, nail it in. Just gonna use some brad nails on it. <coughs> this is one thing I hate about glue. Man, it moves your piece around a lot on you. But we're still good there. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it flush with the back side so we'll have a little bit of overhang on the front side of it. I think that'll look pretty good. Now I put that clamp on the back side, I'm gonna put this clamp on the front side just because it's gonna help pull them in better. Remember when I was tightening that clamp down over there, it was uh, moving just a hair bit. Not really, just a hair bit, it was moving. We'll just say that. There we go. We're nice and flush there now. You don't gotta go crazy with these clamps. We're just gonna hold them in place. Just gonna put some nails in it. And we'll put one in the middle, only because it's kind of bowed out a little. Like that. So we'll get that nail on. Still don't know if I want to put a. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do the end yet. I kind of like it more squared off now that I look at it, but I'm gonna get the nail gun. Oh. Let's see what nails we got up in this thing. And those are only one inch nails, and we're not going to do it. So, that nail gun is big with that box. It's not stay back on it. The glue is going to do the majority of the fastening on this thing, but I think I got my nails mixed up on them. These should be inch and a quarter, I believe. Yep. So what we'll do is shoot some uh, inch and a quarter nails in it. This far into go now and screw up and shoot a nail through the front of it, but it has happened. That one's got to be set a little further. Trying to stay on the edge. Now. But we'll set all these nails with a, a nail set and then um, we'll come back and fill them with a little bit of, a little bit of putty. I think that'll do. So that's it. Now I'm 
Now we'll get the uh, nail set out. Punch these babies down in there. And next time you see this, we'll be sanding. All right, guys, I decided I won't put a chamfer on it, just around the top of it. I just don't like how rough it is. It's not rough, but I want something kind of smooth looking. I know a round over would match more of the style of it, but I like chamfer look, so that's what we're going to do. sponsor us nothing like that but uh when you turn this on like your older routers when you turn them on turn them off the best gonna keep spinning until the motor winds all the way down this has got an, an actual stop in it so it's on instant off that's awesome this thing's got better brakes than the new f-150s have i'm just gonna say that right now okay <laughs> we'll be back in a little bit we got like this uh filler set up and then um we'll start sanding it all right folks time to put some color on that bad boy show it to him Emma. She's saying it's smooth, nice and pretty. Turned out really nice, I think. So we're gonna go with the same, this uh, very thing, classic black, same thing we did on our nightstands. There's a picture of them right there, the nightstands we built. So even though this is pine, nightstands were cypress, I, luckily they're not close to each other, so it's not gonna matter too much. So I'm gonna get this stuff mixed up and stirred up and uh, We'll set the camera up and bore you with a very slow video. No, I'm kidding. I'll fast forward for y'all, but uh, be able to stay in this thing. See you in a little while. Alright, she's stained. So you see my, my holes here. I do gotta get some plugs to put in those because that's how it's gonna mount to the bed. I'm gonna remove the actual legs, the, the front legs of the bed, because obviously I built the bed frame too. So the footboard will be the structural end, but I think it looks good. I didn't stain that backboard because it's gonna be mounted up against the front of the frame. But yeah, we'll let this dry. Probably uh I don't know, we got pretty good wind today. It's a nice breeze, so it might dry pretty quickly. And then uh, we can get some clear put on it. If not, we'll clear it in the morning, but um, next time you see it, it'll be attached to the bed. I think that's the bath. 
Hey, Matthew wanted to show you our finished footboard. I think it turned out really nice. I still gotta get my plugs put in where my holes go. And I'll probably remove it to paint the bottom board right here, you see? It's got some raw wood showing on it. That's part of the actual bed frame itself, but I think it'll work. It's a nice low profile. I like it. Thanks for watching. Leave us a thumbs up.